Hello, this is Mr. T with a tutorial on graphing exponential functions. In this case, our equation that we're going to work with is y equals 2 times 3 to the x. Remember, our model for exponential functions is y equals a times b to the x power. And by looking at these, uh, we focus on b to decide whether this is growth or decay. So b in our case is 3. If b is greater than 1, we have growth. And if b is less than 1 but bigger than 0, we have decay. So in our problem, b is equal to 3. So that implies we have exponential growth. The basic shape of exponential growth I'm sketching here, it approaches a horizontal asymptote on the left side, in this case y equals 0, and gradually increases, and then at the end it steeply increases. Now when we sketch our graph, we want to be more precise, so we will end up finding a couple points on this curve to help us aid in that. A, which in this case is 2, is in an application problem our initial amount, and on a graph, A gives us the y-intercept. So for our basic uh, y equals AB to the x, our y-intercept is at 0a, and for this problem it is at 0, 2. So we have a point on our graph at 0, 2. As I said in the basic shape on, of exponential growth on the left side, we have the graph approaching uh, the x-axis. That's called, when a, when a graph approaches a point but doesn't cross it, that's called a horizontal asymptote. So for this exponential growth problem, our horizontal asymptote I'm going to abbreviate that HA for horizontal asymptote, is Y equals zero. Normally we indicate horizontal asymptotes on a graph with a dashed line, so on top of this x-axis here I'm going to put a dashed line showing our horizontal asymptote. Since this is an exponential growth problem, on the left side as we go negative we're going to keep getting closer and closer to that point. And we had our initial value, so we know the graph over here is gradually increasing as I just drew. To figure out how steep the graph continues after we cross the y-axis and head into positive x values, we can pick a value of x. So let's pick x equals 1. So I'm just randomly picking that. You could pick another number, but this one's going to be easy to calculate. To calculate y, we substitute in for x and calculate that. 3 to the first power is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. So we have the point 1, 6 that we can add to our graph. So let me sketch, put that plot on, point on the graph. And now we can see that we're bending up sharply so we can continue our graph. Some other attributes of the graph we could highlight. Notice on here that the graph is valid. This continues forever that way. This continues forever that way. So our domain for x, that's the valid x values, is all real numbers. Range is the valid y values. And on this we can see the y values are always above our horizontal asymptote, so our range is y greater than zero. We could also characterize the shape of this curve when it curves up like this, thinking, you know, if this continued curving it might hold water. This shape of this graph is called concave up. Uh, we knew before we even sketched the graph that the concave, that this graph would be concave up by looking at the value of a. When a is greater than zero, we get concave up. So I hope this helps with the basic graphing of a exponential growth function. This time we're going to work with a slightly more complicated exponential function. Uh, this is of the form y equals a times b, and now we have x minus h plus k is our template for this form. If you remember in the last two tutorials, we used the base function of this called y equals a b to the x power. So we've added a term being added or subtracted to the x, 
which will result in a horizontal shift. And we have added or subtracted a term on the end, which will result in a vertical shift. To quickly graph these, we want to first start with the base function. So to write the equivalent base function for our original problem, we will strip off the k. So we're going to strip the, uh, the h, I mean, and we're going to strip off the k. So our base function is y equals 2 times 3 to the x. If you remember from the last tutorial, we can immediately find that our y-intercept is at 0, 2. And if I pick x equals 1 and calculate, I'm going to get 2 times 3 to the first, which is 6. And I have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. And since this was bigger, since b is 3, bigger than 1, we have exponential growth. So given those factors, now that you've mastered that skill, we could quickly sketch our graph. We have 0, 2, 1, 6, and our horizontal asymptote. And on exponential growth, we approach that on the left, and we now have our skeps. And this is our base function, not the one that we were asked to graph. Now using translations, we can focus on what this x plus 2 is telling us and the negative 4. Since our template we have minus h, that means we have to take the opposite. So on our problem, h equals negative 2, which implies that we're going to shift left and 2. Now I'm going to be graphing down here, so I need to rewrite that. So let's write over here. Uh, h equals negative 2 means left 2. And I've circled here our k. We have plus k, so this is minus 4. So this means our k is negative 4. That means we're going to go down uh, 4. Now the down 4 applies to our horizontal asymptote, so that is going to move down 4 all the way across. So we have a new horizontal asymptote. And then our points are going to move left 2 down 4. So if I take this point, I go left 2 down 4. So that's the translated point for our y-intercept. And for our second point where we picked x equals 1, we move that left 2 down 4. And now we sketch our exponential growth. So here our horizontal asymptote is down here, so we're going to Whoops. Yep. So you can see that our green graph is a little bit to the left, two units to the left of our original base function, and we are down four. So this is the way we can handle the more complicated uh, exponential functions using what's called translations. In this case, we are graphing y equals two to the one-fourth x. In our model, remember we have a, b to the x power, so in this problem we have a equals 2 and b equals 1 fourth. If you remember from the last tutorial, when b is less than 1 uh, but bigger than 0, this implies that we have exponential decay. And you might remember that the basic shape of exponential decay is we're starting very large and gradually we are decaying and keeps getting closer and closer to zero. Like before, we'll go through and get some specific points on the graph to make the graph uh, more accurate. A being equal to 2 tells us that this graph will be concave up and tells us that it will be above the uh, horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. So again, we have a horizontal asymptote on the basic y equals a, b to the x of y equals 0, the horizontal line y equals 0. And since a is positive, we will be having our range b all values of y are going to be greater than 0. 
you remember domain, the valid x values for all exponential functions, domain is all real numbers. So now we want to uh, get a couple points on here. First thing we can do to aid our sketching is to sketch in our horizontal asymptote. Again, on the base function, this is along the x-axis. And since it's exponential decay, we know that we will be approaching that horizontal asymptote for exponential decay on the right side. If this was exponential growth, we would be approaching that point on the left. Now remember, A also gives us our y-intercept, the point 0, A. So for this case, our y-intercept is going to be 0, 2. So at 0, 2, I will be graphing that. So we know out here we're approaching that horizontal asymptote, so we have this gradual decline out there. And now we want to pick a value of x to get a second point. Now we could pick x equals 1, or we could pick something over on this left side to figure out how steep it gets. So I'm going to pick x equals negative 1. Now we have to review our um, rules on negative exponents. And if you remember from our unit just before uh, midterm exams, when we have a negative exponent, to turn that into a positive exponent, we take the reciprocal of our number. So we could rewrite this as 2, and we could flip that fraction, 4 over 1, and now the exponent is a plus 1. So we have 4 to the first power, which is 4 times 2 is 8. So the point we have here is we picked x as negative 1, and y is now 8. So we have the point negative 1, 8. And again, we can see that this graph is now rapidly increasing. Again, uh, we have a concave up graph. Uh, if this negative exponent uh, is confusing, we could have picked x equals positive 1 and graphed 2 times, I mean, calculated y, 2 times 1 fourth to the first power, which is 2 times 1 fourth, which is 1 half. So we have the point 1 and 1 half. We could have shown that point here, 1 and 1 half. So actually this graph is coming down steeper than uh, I had shown. And this is uh, now exponential decay. So you can see the similarities with exponential growth, except with b being a fraction, the graph is uh, going down instead of going up. I hope this helps. In this one, we are graphing a exponential decay function that involves uh, translations. In black, you can see the equation that we are being asked to graph, 2 times 1 fourth to the x minus 3 power plus 2. I've written in blue our template, y equals ab times, I mean, to the x minus h power plus k. So using that template and extracting from our original problem in green, we have a equals 2, b equals 1 fourth, h equals 3, and k equals 2. If we look at those numbers, the b being 1 fourth, meaning it's less than 1, tells us that this is exponential decay. And the a being 2 tells us that in our base function, which we talked about in the last um, video, the base function y-intercept is 0, 2. Now that's not the y-intercept for our function in black, that's our base function. Again, the base function is y equals just ab to the x. So our base function here that we're going to be looking at is 2 times 1 fourth to the x. Let's graph our base function. So we have a horizontal asymptote. So on the base function, the horizontal asymptote is always y equals 0. And we have a uh, horizontal, I mean, a y-intercept at 0, 2. And if we plug in the point x equals 1, we are going to get 2 times 1 fourth to the first power, which is 2 times 1 fourth or 1 half. So we're here at 1 and 1 half. And we have, we can see we're coming down steeply, and then we know we have to flatten out. 
So I've just sketched a sketch of our base function. Now that's not the graph for our problem in black. This is the base function. We need to add the effects of the k and the h. Now the template is x minus h, so we have x minus 3, so that tells us h is 3, which implies that we need to shift all of our points 3 to the right. And in our template we have plus k and we have plus 2, so k is 2. That tells us that everything is going to shift up 2. So on our vertical shift, remember we shift the horizontal asymptote as well as the points. So if we graph our final answer in black, our horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 2. And each of our points are going to shift or translate 3 to the right and up 2. So if we take our original base function y-intercept, if I go 3 to the right up 2, that point is there. And if I take the point we calculated at 1 half and I go 3 to the right and up 2, we're here. And now we can sketch our decay function going through those points and leveling out. So our final answer here for the graph in black, this is the graph of the translated function. As you can see, it's up and to the right. And in green was the graph of what's called our base function, which is shown there. I hope this helps.